was a really beautiful, slightly grey and misty morning. We are continuing on towards Carcassonne and uh, just travelling through the vineyards of what region are we in? Nick? Are we still in Languedoc? Yeah. It's just as spectacular as it was yesterday, if not more so. We're kind of in more mountainous uh, terrain at the moment, which is really a weird thing to, to do on your sailboat, but there you are. And um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful, but we're just saying that, you know, we are going quite slowly and it's, it's never more evident as to when we've got joggers right next to us who are literally keeping pace with us. So we are going at the moment at a slow jog pace. So that's, that's our speed. We had now been on the Canal du Midi for almost a week. The scenery had morphed from flat Mediterranean plains to hilly wine growing country and the view from our sailing boat, now converted into a canal boat, seemed to subtly change with every passing mile. Geez, I reckon that's pretty close on this side. Really? Maybe my sense of space just isn't very good. You look pretty close to me. We were still getting used to this type of boat life. Living on the canals was completely different from sailing along the coast or across oceans. For one, we had to get used to all the close quarter manoeuvring, and every time we went under a bridge, one of us would go to the bow with the boat hook, just in case the person on the helm misjudged and we needed to fend off. Although, I'm pleased to say that this was never actually necessary. Even though this stretch of the Canal du Midi didn't involve going through any locks, between the bridges, other boat traffic and windy narrow sections of the canal, we had plenty to keep us occupied. I toot your blower, I think there's another boat coming. I can see them just I can't see any other boat. Okay, it's very, very narrow. I think there's like a canal bridge. You've got loads of space though. Stacked it, which means they're probably pissed, irresponsible, and they're too close to us. And if all of that weren't enough to keep us on our toes, there was always a deteriorating weather to contend with. Bit breezy. <laughs> Woo. We've had such nice weather so far on the Canal du Midi, it's been like very summery, and uh, today it is more like. <laughs> Get off. More like autumn. It is cold, suddenly it was a warm breeze this morning and then suddenly it just dropped, the temperature dropped about 10 degrees, it is cold and we thought oh here it comes and we saw in the forecast that this evening there's going to be about 40, 35, 40 knots of wind, hopefully only for a couple of hours, so fingers crossed you know it'll all be fine and before we actually settle down for the night it will all be over. But yes, needless to say, we're slightly, we're paying a bit more attention than we ordinarily would to our mooring situation. We wanted to moor up like in a town somewhere on a town dock, but we just couldn't find anywhere. Every village we went through just wasn't happening. So yeah, we've got like a nature mooring and uh, we're not allowed to tie up to trees in the Canal du Midi or anywhere along the canals. That's a no-no for obvious reasons. The ground is so hard that it's really difficult to get our stakes into. So anyway, we're managing. Nick's, uh, Nick's doing a good job. I'm, sorry, I'm going backwards as we speak. Okay. Yep. This one? This one. Stop, 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 stop. Put up a 
So the first double lock of the day is coming up in about a kilometre and we change things around a little bit. I've got the two lines that are normally sheets but we're using them as lines. I don't know if they're just spare sheets that we've got lying around. I've got those on both bow cleats so that I can throw those because as you saw the big black mooring lines, the 20 meter, what millimeters are, are they Nick? 10? They're 14. Okay so we've got these 20, 20 meter 14 mil lines, mooring lines that we've always had. And I've always known that they're too heavy for me to do anything much with but it's never been more evident since we got into the canals that I just cannot throw them. They're also damp. Didn't help. You want to go and have a look at the fender? Yeah. Yes, as I was saying, even Nick missed his first go at hooking the uh, the line over the bollard. But anyway, so we've got a double lock coming up in about a kilometre, and I'm hoping that we're going to be the only boat in there. And I think we've got all our lines and fenders and the fender boards and everything all organised so that we can better get ourselves through the lock. But it's all a learning experience. It's all completely different to what we're used to so every time we go through a lock and every time we moor up every time we do anything we we learn something new so it's good it's fun but I am annoyed that I'm not strong enough to throw those big lines that really frustrates me all right so we just got to the double lock and it would appear that there were quite a few people who picked up boats boats at the higher base about a kilometer away and they're now in front of us so now we're we're waiting with people who have just told us this is their first time ever hiring a boat and we're going to be in the lock with them so this should be interesting hopefully not too interesting Very, very long line right here so it means nothing it just means it might take me the next 30 seconds I've just got a lot of lines to It may be better for you to actually get off. Do you think? Probably, yeah. Take the jump off and take the line. Okay, you sure for me to get off? I have a feeling today might be a bit of a slow day to be honest, we're stuck at another double lock and we've got two boats in front of us this time and I've only ever seen two boats in a lock at a time so I think we might have to wait a second round so but that's okay. <laughs> we uh, aren't really on a tight schedule, I mean we are aware that we've been in the canals a week and we're not even close to a quarter of the way through yet and our original time frame was a month in the canals so I think that that time frame is going to have to be uh, revised somewhat
Okay, so the latest delay is that the lock is closed for lunch. So, um, yeah, they told us that we had to wait another hour while the lock keepers have lunch, which is fair enough. There's no reason why they should work through their lunch break. And uh, so we'll take the opportunity to have some lunch as well while we're waiting. So here I am halfway through lock number four or five. As you can see, I've got gloves on and it's not to protect my delicate little fingers. It's because if you have to touch the side walls, they are filthy. Anyway, the lesson that we have learned is that if you are taking a boat through the canals um, with your mast on deck, firstly, try and have as little of the mast forward as possible. Um, we wanted as little of the mast forward as possible, but the bloke who stepped, the unstepped the mast said, oh, no, you definitely need it like equidistance. We've got two meters, four, two meters out. The aft is easy to protect, the fore is more difficult to protect and only because the size of these locks are curved and the boat is curved so it sits perfectly, you know, comfortably inside the curve of the lock but it means that the front of the mast is um, knocking, does knock the wall um, quite a lot. So we've got buckets and all sorts of bits of sacrificial wood strung on to protect it but what we have noticed is that there are normally four bollards to attach um, in the locks one four one aft and two kind of amidships but one is more forward than the other if you take your stern line um to the a forward face a forward bollard uh, so one of the midships there's kind of midships bollards on the dock wall and use it as a spring so use it as a stern spring so what happens is as they open the locks um you get a massive influx of water and depending on how kind the lock keeper is will depend on how much water is let in we've had a couple of absolute sods that have just let it gush in and what happens is the the nose of the boat just gets like pushed around really really quickly and you smack the the, the mast into the the lock wall however if as you see them kind of letting the sluice gate opening to let the water in you kind of really control the the reverse uh, on your engine uh, you can stem the, the nose really quite adequately. We've been up to almost half reverse power to keep the nose off the dock wall. Bow thruster just won't even touch it. There's just too much water. It's like, you know, trying to get your bow thruster to work when the wind's caught you in a windy uh, marina. So yeah, so a lesson we've learned and to pass on to anyone else that wants to do this trip. Uh, if you need to keep the nose out, stern spring um, with really good protection on the aft quarter. But you know, we must have done about 40 of these locks now and apparently within the next 50 or 60 kilometers, they start all going down back to the sea. And hopefully we've been told that the, 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 the ones that descend are much calmer because you don't get this big influx of water. You know, literally it just drains out. Today is a big day. Today we are doing quite a few double and even triple locks. They seem to be occurring every two kilometers, sometimes even less, because yes, we're working kilometers now that we're in the canal, not miles. And um, yeah, I think we're slowly perfecting our technique. We were, when we, first, when we first entered the canal, our kind of technique or our strategy was just for us both to sound the boat and then we would both try and loop the lines over the bollards, even though we're like, obviously down the bottom of the lock. And that worked sometimes. Oh, I'll pick this up in a minute. There's another lock coming. <laughs> lock. Right, that's done. So as I was saying, we have uh, changed our strategy a little bit because um, us both staying on the boat uh, when we go into the first lock wasn't really, it was a bit of a high risk strategy because if you couldn't lasso the bollard, if you know the, the water level was too deep or the lock was too deep and or if you didn't have an ecclesiastic that would take your lines for you then uh, yeah you're in a bit of a pickle. So we decided to start trying to let me off first which is actually the technique that the guidebooks say, but we talked to other people and they were like, no, 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 just let the Ecclesia take your lines. Well, that wasn't really working for us very well every time. So now we let myself off first, or Nick lets me off first, and I do like a hundred meter sprint up to the lock with the boat hook in my hand, as if I'm about to do the javelin. And then I can take the lines with the boat hook. I can just uh, 
lean down and, and grab the bow line which I would have already arranged so that it's got little loops in it that I can pick up and then I tie off the bow line and then I come back for the stern line and so far it's working relatively well it's particularly good when you're going through these uh, kind of stacked locks where you have either two or three locks in a row because I have to walk the boat between each lock anyway so yeah it works well it's worked well so far but anyway so we have reached our second triple lock of the day and uh, we got here just in time for lunch so they've just closed the lock gates for the Clusier to have their lunch which is fine because it gives us a chance to sit and have a break have a nice lunch a nice sit down lunch instead of just a kind of sandwich or something and uh, at one o'clock will be the first ones back through the lock so we're making good time today it's uh, makes up for the other day where we just went so slowly it was just yeah we just didn't seem to get anywhere but today we're making good time so we're both pleased and it's a beautiful day another gorgeous day in southern France sun's out sky's blue what more could you want Last lock of the day and it's a triple lock. So after this we're in the little village of Trebes. Treb? Treb? Trebes? I don't know. And uh, that's where we'll be spending tonight, hopefully, if we can find somewhere to park ourselves. Just waiting for the other boats to come through now and then it'll be our turn. about the fortified city, the, the ancient city. I think hmm. <laughs> what did you tell me to repeat? <laughs> Let me refer to my notes that you beat into me last <laughs> night while I was trying to sleep. It was founded 1000 years BC. It's pre, pre Roman. Pre Roman. Pre dates Roman. Well, there's a fairly amazing mountain range that we seem to be in. Other way, over. You're a bit rubbish at that old finger pointy thing. It's there. <laughs> We've just taken the Bimini off because we are going through the lowest bridge on the entire canal. Oh. 